Hello, fellow Rebel Capitalists. Hope you're well. I know there's a lot of debate right now as to whether we have a hard landing, like an economic uh, crash, a financial crisis, something like that, or we have this kind of Goldilocks type of soft landing where the Fed just gradually increases interest rates and inflation just magically comes back down, but the unemployment rate stays below 4%. And we just kind of look back on this period five years from now and say, boy, what on earth were we worried about? What was that yield curve predicting? The yield curve is dead. We should no longer pay any attention to it. We didn't go into a, a hard landing, let alone a recession. There was nothing to worry about. What I want to do is go to the New York Times to give us some historical context to see if the probability is higher that we have a hard landing or a soft landing. <laughs> because one thing we know is that the central planners and the authoritarians are always correct. Right? <laughs> Let's go to the New York Times. Title of this article, Fed Chairman Projects Soft Landing for the U.S. Economy. But I'd like you to note the fine print. The date. Is this from 2023? No. This is from February 15th, 2007. <laughs> I want to read to you some of the things that Fed Chair Ben Bernanke was saying at the time. The, the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, Ben Bernanke, has given Congress an upbeat view of the U.S. economy, predicting that unemployment was likely to remain low over the next two years as inflation declined slightly. Does that sound familiar? Have you heard, I don't know, maybe another Fed chair saying something similar or identical right now in 2023? And I'd like to remind you, that uh, I don't have the chart right in front of me, but I'm 99. In fact, Josh, why don't you pull it up? Let's look at a chart of the let's look at a chart of the three month and ten year. Although I might have that right here. Aha, I do. So this was February of 2000. Oh, well, would you look at that? The yield curve was inverted. <laughs> Oh, uh, you just cannot make this up. February 2007, the three-month tenure was inverted by 60 basis points. Today, when the Fed chair is saying the exact same thing, we're going to have this soft landing, and the unemployment rate is going to stay low. And inflation is just going to glide down softly, just like a butterfly with sore feet. <laughs> but this time, they're saying the same thing, but the inversion is 1.2%. Double, in fact, the inversion that we had in 2007 when Ben Bernanke was making the exact same claim. So I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. And by the way, I want to give a hat tip to Macro Alf. Yeah, he was talking about this. I don't know if he was talking about this specific article on a podcast interview, but Josh heard him and did some research. And this is how we, we found this from the New York Times. And they also point out how the stock market at the time was doing relatively well. And here Bernanke goes on to say inflationary pressures appear to have abated somewhat. Bernanke told the Senate Banking Committee. 
a waning of the temporary factors that boosted inflation in recent years will probably help foster a continued edging down of core inflation. The Fed official forecast, an average of forecast by the Fed governors and the Fed's district bank, essentially portrays a Goldilocks economy that is neither too hot with inflation nor too cold with rising unemployment. In contrast to the changing moods on Wall Street, Bernanke, meaning the yield curve, <laughs> Bernanke expressed a broad satisfaction with the nation remains on track for a soft landing, modest slow growth, or modest slowdown in growth, and would reduce upward pressure on prices without aggregating unemployment. Again, I mean, I can read more of these paragraphs, guys, but it's just the exact same thing. It, this is a script that we hear the mainstream media regurgitate and the Fed officials regurgitate right now in 2022 and 2023. As the yield curve is twice as inverted as it was in February of 2007. I mean, they're saying the exact same things word for word. How did that work out for you, Ben, <laughs> in 2008? <laughs> oh, and here's another one. I I've got to read this to you. This is just add this to the list of the things that we hear today. That's an exact quote of what they said in 2007. Prior, and just for those of you who might be new to macroeconomics, this was just prior to the entire global economy going into a complete meltdown and a catastrophe that, that almost brought on a, a global economic depression to the likes of, of we have never seen in, in, our, uh, in U.S. history. So let me read this quote for you. The U.S. economy appears to be making a transition from a rapid rate of expansion experienced over the preceding several years to a more sustainable average pace of growth. Again, if I wouldn't have told you that this was Ben Bernanke in 2007, and I would have said this is Jerome Powell, 2023, you would have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, of, of course. Yeah, he's, George, what are you talking about? This is old news. He's been saying this for the last six months. So the bottom line is I understand that this in and of itself is, is not a, a predictor of recession or if we have a soft landing or hard landing, but I do think it's an important data point to realize that prior to other catastrophic events, <laughs> economic catastrophes, the Fed was saying the exact same thing that they are saying today. So you can take that data point however you want to. But for me, that just increases the probability in my mind that uh, we are headed for a, a hard landing and, and not a soft landing. At the very least, at the very least, if I was a market participant or I was setting up my portfolio or I was taking this as um, – a variable, or if I was taking this as an input to my decision-making process, I would completely, completely ignore and discount anything the mainstream media or the Federal Reserve was saying. And I think you would have a, 
a higher uh, chance of predicting a specific outcome if you did the exact opposite of what they said and what they predicted. And I think this is not all the proof you need, but it's uh, definitely doesn't uh, add to their forecasting track record, <laughs> let's say. And therefore, if they haven't predicted anything right in the past, and if everything that they predict, the opposite happens, it would lead you to believe that if they are predicting X, Y, and Z this time, that the opposite will most likely happen again. I think that's the point. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. See you in the next video.